and that's one of the reasons why I love MMA. And 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 people ask me if I'd want to do you know the NBA or the NFL, MLB. I love those sports, but sometimes it's a little too buttoned up. And I love how you know there's so many different personalities, characters. They haven't been packaged by PR people telling them what to say and just giving you non-answers. They're not afraid to show who they really are and have some fun at times and you know talk about some serious things. So to me, actually, the the thing I love most about covering the sport isn't necessarily the fights; it's the fighters, the characters. Do you feel like now, though, with the UFC, like what direction are they going now that WME IMG, I guess it is, they bought the company, the the Reebok deals in place to where everyone wears the same thing. What direction yeah. are they? Are they trying to take the, like the individual out of it? Yeah, well, that's that's another great question. Um, it remains to be seen, um, but it is, I think, going in, I guess, a troubling direction because I feel and and important to note that the Reebok deal was 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 struck before WME bought them. Um, but th- that that was kind of like the beginning of it all. Uh, I, one of the things that I love about combat sports is. The, uh, the individuality, right? The uniqueness of these people. Um, you know, when Mike Tyson would walk to the ring with the, the, the black towel over his head and the black shorts and the black shoes. I mean, that was, that was, that was striking and, and it really made him stick out. And MMA fighters, a lot of them have very unique looks and they've taken that away. And, and I don't like the fact that they all look the same. A, for the casual fan, it's, it's, it's a lot harder to distinguish them it's harder to get emotionally invested in these people if they all look the same and are dressed the same and be for the fighters themselves i mean a lot of them draw inspiration like there's a fighter named joanne calderwood she's a great scottish fighter and she would wear kind of like a, a kilt outfit and that's awesome and people love that and that gets her fans from scotland into her and, and she likes that because she's representing her home country and so i don't i mean i understand why they did it to make money but i don't like the fact that they did it i i i i I, you know, if, if, if I'm being honest, I wish that they wouldn't have gone in that direction. Um, and with WME, you know, they're, they're, they're in an interesting spot right now because they paid $4.025 billion for the UFC. Um, and the UFC is coming off their two best years ever. But now when you look around, you know, Ronda is maybe never coming back. Connor says he might not fight this year. John Jones is out until the summer. Brock Lesnar. We don't know if he'll ever fight again as well. You know, where are the draws? Where are they going to make, uh, you know, where are they going to get a, a million dollar pay-per-view? Like they had five of them in 2016. Where's the million dollar pay-per-view going to come without these people? And so they're, they're making decisions like making the featherweight title for the women just out of nowhere. Um, which, which is weird because they're not invested in that division, making interim titles just so that they can sell a pay-per-view with an interim title, booking fights, booking title fights between champion and uh you know the 10th ranked guy just because that's maybe the highest selling fight but it, it's also a bit insulting to you know the actual number one or two ranked guy who 100 percent deserves it but maybe isn't the biggest name possible i thought that the previous regime did a great job of kind of going back and forth skirting that line between sport and entertainment and they did a, a i think a really nice job of building the ufc into an actual sport when they bought it you know, weight classes, things like that. It wasn't viewed as a sport. It was viewed more as a freak show. It was more spectacle. And, um, I'm, I'm worried that they're going to undo some of that. So I'd like to see them go back to, you know, respecting the rankings, having a meritocracy. You know, the number one guy, regardless of who he is, he fights for the belt. And sometimes you can make fun fights here or there, but, um, the way that they've been going over the last, you know, five, six months has been, I don't know, a little puzzling. And also, by the way, I'd love to see them actually talk to the media about what their plans are. Could you imagine if someone bought, you know, say the Atlanta Falcons and bought them in July and here we are in February and they have yet to address the media once about what their plans are, what the future is, why they bought it. Just something. Say something to someone. I think that that's that's very strange as well. Do you think the casual fan cares about the belts or do they just care about individual fighters? I think that they do care about the belts. I think one thing that the UFC did very well as opposed to boxing was having just the right amount of weight classes, especially when they were really exploding. I mean, not that long ago, they only had five weight classes, lightweight, welterweight, middleweight, light heavyweight, and heavyweight. And so it was very easy for every fan to tell you who the champions were. And and since then, they've expanded to 10, and they're about to have their 11th. Still, you know, very easy for someone like me, and I, I would suspect that most fans can guess who or can say who the uh, the current champions are. That being said, 
I do think that they've devalued some of the belts over time because of the fact that they've booked some of these fights, you know, where the champion is fighting, you know, a random fighter who's not necessarily deserving of a title fight. Or, you know, what, what happened with Connor last year, you know, what happened with Connor last year proved that, um, you don't necessarily need a title fight. The stars are the, are the biggest draws, no doubt about it, but there's only a select few fighters that can actually, you know, outdraw the belts, so to speak. So, I, I do think that it's important to go back to making the belt the most important thing. And what's happened is I feel like they've kind of devalued the belt, but still when the fighter gets the belt, they're now using it as this golden ticket to start calling their own shots. So they get the belt, they don't defend it once, and they think, okay, I can do what Connor did. I can ask for money fights. I can want to fight the guy above me even though it doesn't really make sense and it kind of, you know, cuts the line and it, it, it's, it's, it's frustrating for other fighters who are trying to get to what you just got, which is the title fight. So it was a lot less cleaner, but this is a byproduct once again of the $4 billion price tag. What's happened is the fighters have become a lot more courageous and they've wanted to say, okay, I, you know, now I want to get paid. You know, you guys got paid. I want to get paid. The problem is they're directing their, um, not for lack of a better word, anger towards the wrong people who they're really angry about or, or, or really angry um, yeah about is, is is the previous owners who made out like bandits who you know got this amazing deal four billion dollars etc off of a you know original two million dollar purchase the new guys are the ones who are trying to you know recoup their losses you know pay off their debt their loan etc and, and make the sport in, into a, a bigger thing but because they don't have that personal relationship with the new owners they feel comfortable saying, ho, oh, oh, ho, I'm not going to take these fights. I want to fight, you know, the big money fights and all that. And it's created kind of a mess of a situation. What do you think of the, the argument people make saying once WME got in, they, um, it's going to be better for these fighters to get into movies and acting and all this, like out of the octagon stuff. Like I don't see how that plays yeah. into anything. I don't, it's like Stone Cold. I love Stone Cold Steve Austin, but he even admits like the movies that he's been in have not been blockbusters. No, I mean it's uh it's it's a silly premise. I mean when when uh when Viacom bought Bellator, we heard oh they're going to be on reality shows and 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 you know on, on Comedy Central and MTV and all our different platforms movies and what's happened? Nothing's happened. Um uh, you can't turn fighters into, you know, Hollywood actors having that it factor. I mean e even Ronda Rousey, I mean if she had some nice cameos, but she's just not a born actress. Um Gina Carano has tried. Others have dabbled uh, a little bit here and there, and they may have some some success. There's no doubt about it. But not everyone's The Rock. I mean, he's a very very special human being. How many fighters? How many athletes in the history of time have been able to go from athletics to Hollywood and, and be very successful? I mean, we could probably count them on one hand. You know, there's like the O.J. Simpsons of the world. There's The Rocks of the world. There's not that many of them. Um, and so, yeah, I think any fighter who, who thinks, okay, and they're going to try, they're, they're certainly going to try, but, you know, any fighter who thinks, oh, go, this is my ticket to Hollywood, this is my ticket of getting out of the fight game now that WME owns the UFC, I, I think they're sorely mistaken. I think that it would, they would, they would be better off trying to plan for the future and, and having some irons in the fire and, and some business ideas than trying to bank on that. Does the, uh, the new ownership, does that change your relationship with the UFC and Dana White and everything? It's for people that don't know. I mean, can you take us th through a little bit about your uh, when you were banned and your credential taken, and it, it was only basically two days because of the, the public outcry for for them to get you back in? Like, does do these new owners? Do you think it'll change how uh, maybe you can cover these guys? I think that they are. It, it, it's it's obviously grown into a much bigger thing, and. It's, 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 it's no longer this sort of mom and pop shop where they can kind of get away with whatever they want. And so I've never met Ari Emanuel and Patrick Whitesell, the co-owners of WME IMG, but they are obviously very, very, very smart businessmen. And I don't think that they would want to replicate that kind of bad PR, not just towards me, but towards anyone. Um, I, I mean, I know the stories about Ari and that he's a fiery individual, but I mean, he's, very accomplished and very successful and, uh, you know, a self-made guy and, uh, comes from, you know, successful family. So I, I think that the sport has kind of grown up a little bit where stuff like that is, is not going to fly. I'd love to meet them. I'd love to talk to them. I'd love to interview them. 
Um, but as, as I said, you know, it's, it's just been hard to, to, you know, get in front of them and they haven't been made accessible to us. I will say this though, that the, uh, the PR team has changed in the last couple months and it has been a really nice surprise. Um, dating back to when I first got into MMA reporting, um, the PR team from the UFC has always been for the most part, very adversarial towards the UFC. And, uh, they've now put some people in place who have been, you know, we don't need to be best friends, but I've never understood why you want to try to be enemies with us. Um, and they've, you know, been courteous and professional, gone out of their way to, to help and to really let us know that this is a new time, a new regime. So, you know, maybe the new owners deserve that credit. I don't know. But uh, it's it's been a really nice change, at least for the first couple months. We'll see what happens moving forward.